Hi there fellow guitar slingers, Josh Rogers here. Welcome to amp tutorial number one. This tutorial will be dealing with the basic parameters which are here. There will be seven tutorials. Each tutorial will cover one of these pages from basic, GEQ, preamp, power amp, power supply, speaker, dynamics. Dynamics will also contain the explanation of the mixer section here. I'm going to break this down into three sections. We have the preamp section, power amp section, and some circuitry that happens in between the preamp and the power amp. Input drive controls the preamp gain. You can take this anywhere from clean to mild breakup, overdrive right through to distortion, simply by adjusting it from zero all the way up to mount faces. I have outlined this in a little bit more detail in one of my earlier tutorials called 12 ways to adjust amp gain. You can follow the link that I'll leave in the description below if you want to check it out in a little bit more detail. It's important to remember that the input drive is directly related to master volume all the way over here which I haven't got to yet but I will a little bit later. I'm just going to head back and I'm going to change out that amp and we're going to go back to this one. Let's discuss the overdrive. The difference between overdrive and the normal drive that you saw in the 1959 SLP jump it's just about the positioning of this additional gain. For the overdrive that's being positioned prior to the third triode in the circuit and if we choose the normal from the 1959 SLP we come to normal that's positioned prior to the last triode. That's the difference there. It's just about where that additional gain is being introduced. That goes from zero all the way up to 10. I'm almost gonna spend no time on bass, mid and treble because I'm sure most of you out there understand exactly what these three parameters do. Input trim, I think you shouldn't touch until you've sorted out your overall sound, your overall tone, and you've got it right where you like it. But perhaps you think, ah, oh, I just need a little bit more gain, or actually I need a little bit less gain. That's the time to come over to the input trim because it doesn't have a bearing on the tone. All it does is increase or decrease gain according to whether you go up or down. My tip here is to spend your time making sure that you have your tone just as you like it and then using input trim to either increase or decrease the amount of gain that you have. It works in a linear manner. It doesn't work like the drive here. Switching boost on will give you an additional 12 decibels of gain at the input of the amp. Switching the cut switch on engages the cut switch and that acts basically like a high pass filter. What that'll do is tighten up your tone, reduce the low end looseness that you may have. If you think your basses are a bit muddy, your low frequencies are sort of mushing out, it could be a good idea to turn that on. If you turn fat on, that acts like a mid-range boost. Let's move on to the section that contains the parameters that are between the preamp and the power amp. We have bright, bright switch, bright cap, saturation switch, and saturation drive. Here the bright acts as a shelving filter between the preamp and power amp. This controls the level of the bright switch shelving filter anywhere from minus 12 dB up to positive 12 dB. If you want this effect here, to be more pronounced in your overall sound then you would raise the dB level. Conversely you would lower it if you didn't want its effect to be so audible. The bright cap either increases or decreases the overall brightness of your sound. The bright cap controls the capacitor resistance of this brightness switch here. And moving it down will decrease the overall brightness of your sound. Moving it up will do the opposite, that will increase the brightness of your overall sound. The saturation switch is a modification that will give you a more forceful kind of bellicose edge to your distortion sound. This introduces the modification by Jose Arundondo. Some of you may remember that from my explanation in the 12 ways to adjust amp gain. I talked a little bit about that modification. Jose put in a Zena diode, clipping diode, for a bit more saturation in an amp. If we engage it, we have two settings to engage it in. We can either choose ideal or authentic. The only difference between these two is the amount of volume. Two settings, authentic and ideal. The difference between the two is the heat of the output. Ideal being the hottest output. If you're looking for something really hot rodded and beefy, 
that's the setting to choose. If the saturation switch is engaged, the amount of saturation drive is controlled by this parameter here. The saturation drive controls the amount of saturation and clipping that the switch is providing. It goes anywhere from 1 through to 10. An example of an amplifier that has the saturation switch engaged is the Cameron. If we have a look there, we've selected the Cameron CCV2C. The saturation switch is on the authentic setting here, 3.3 on the saturation drive. The power amp section has presence, sometimes that's high cut, I'll give you an example of that soon. Depth, master volume, and master volume trim. But let's head back to presence. Presence can also be high cut, it depends on the amp that you've chosen. So let's have a look here. At the moment it's presence, let's switch out to another amp. Here you can see we've chosen Mr. Z, Ms. 8, and the presence parameter has now changed to high cut. Let's just explain those while I'm on high cut. High cut will cut the upper frequencies. What this does is it enables you to access the high frequencies inside the power amp. Usually that's taken control of or adjusted inside the preamp section. But with this here, with the high cut, that will allow you to cut highs inside the power amp section itself. Presence will allow you to boost the upper frequencies inside the power amp section. Usually boosting and cutting frequencies is reserved for the preamp. But here we've got some additional tweaking that we're allowed to do. So presence, high cut will allow you to do that. Some amps don't have a negative feedback circuit such as the AC2012AX7B. Let's go to the power amp section and you'll see that negative feedback is at zero. That means that this amp didn't have a negative feedback circuit. So let's go back here and you'll see that this is high cut, it's not presence. So that allows you to still get in there and adjust the high frequencies if you need to. Let's move across now to depth. The depth parameter is a power amp version of presence and it's also related to negative feedback. Let's just head across here. It's related to this parameter here, and it's also related to the master volume. If you decrease a negative feedback or increase the master volume, you will reduce the overall effect of depth. What I mean by that is that it won't be as audible. It goes from 0 to 10, and its effect is most pronounced when you have a higher negative feedback setting or a lower master volume. The higher your master volume, the less pronounced this depth effect is going to sound. And as you decrease negative feedback, the less pronounced the effect of depth is going to sound. Master volume is one of the most important parameters in the basic page setting. It goes anywhere from zero all the way through to 10. If you choose an amp and its master volume automatically occurs at 10, then you'll find that the input drive will control the overall volume. While we're on the master volume parameter, let's head to power supply. If we set supply sag to zero, you'll see that this has changed. It now says PA off. That stands for power amplifier. That means the power amplifier has been disengaged or disabled. Let's bring it up. And now the power amp is engaged again. The master volume controls obviously the master volume of the power amp section. And it is very closely related to the input drive and the input trim in the preamp section. Finally, we have master volume trim. This acts as a multiplier for the master volume. This is particularly handy for amps like the 59 Bass Guy, where your master volume is maxed out and maybe you don't want to use the drive to control the volume. Maybe it's going to introduce a little bit too much drive. What you can do is use the master volume trim and that will either decrease or increase this number here. Let me give you an example. If I take this to 2, it's going to multiply 10 times 2. We're going to have an overall rating of 20. Let's take it down to 0.5. And of course, now this is going to be 5. I'd just like to take the time to offer you a few little tips. Remember that if we see this little symbol here, that means that that parameter can be controlled via expression pedal or an external control pedal. So on the basics page, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
parameters that can be controlled in real time, either using an expression pedal. Just a point to note, the saturation switch and saturation drive tend to work better with drive and distortion that is being generated in the preamp section. So if you're looking to get maximum effect from your saturation switch and your saturation drive, try to make sure that your drive, distortion, etc. is being generated in the preamp section rather than the power amp section. The effect of the saturation will not be as pronounced if you have your preamp distortion at low levels. Mm -hmm.